Imagine. Many thanks for keeping us company. This is Y254 News Highlights and Discussion Monday. We are looking at the reshuffle, cabinet reshuffle, that is, which was made on Friday. CS uh, Amina, Ambassador Amina Mohammed moving to sports from education and Professor Magoa moving to Ministry of Education. Before we took that break, we had seen... Uh, what Amina will do and what she will not be able to do. But I need to get one more question. Does she need to know sports before she... Does she have to know sports in the Okwe Minister of Sports, Eric? Uh, well, uh, I don't think you'd, uh, you have to know sport, but you have to have the passion for sport. Right. You have to... Uh, you have to be driven, mm -hmm. you, you, you have to be seen right. uh, to support or to understand at least something. You don't have to be a sportsman to, right. to, to be a sports CS, but you have to get a passion. Mm -hmm. You have to understand whatever is uh, going on within, within the sport docket and the sport ministry. All right. And even the, situation totally of, uh, yeah. even the situation that we are right. uh, as Kenyan mm -hmm. in terms of sport. Right. Yeah. Also, Winnie, you agree with I, her? I agree with him. He, I mean, she must be able to have basics on what her docket is all about right. and just to understand um, everything that works around that because you cannot work on something that you quite do not have a good understanding of. But we all can agree she's good in what she does. So she will perform in this area. Well, hopefully. <laughs> all right, now let's talk about Professor Magua who was uh, appointed to the Ministry of Education. And uh, this is a man like you highlighted earlier, he has performed where he has been and now moving to the Ministry of Education. A lot has been happening to this ministry from time in memorial. Uh, speak of uh, exam exams, uh, uh, cheating, uh, speak of corruption. Like recently, I know there are people, there might have been a people that is, uh, who corrupted their ways to move to the county schools and not national schools. Those things have been there, they have been happening. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, do you think he's going to do enough to ensure that, uh, to begin with, like CS Matengi, no exam cheating, really? Yeah, I, I have total faith in Professor Magoha because from his track record, he's really been performing mm -hmm. very well. Right. In fact, um, I think almost, let's say he brought like the exam cheating levels from about 5,000 cases mm -hmm. to zero. Right. You know, he's done amazing work. And that also means that being um, in academia, he understands quite the importance of having um, the systems that work both for the lecturers, for the uh, teachers, and for the students. Right. And that way, I have um, confidence that he's going to deliver in this docket, given his uh, track record even at the Kenya National Examination Council. All right. And now, Eric, uh, you alluded confidence with the appointment of Professor Mogo. Why do you think he's the right man for this job? Well, well I think Professor is one man that uh, has got a very clean record, uh, mm -hmm. especially in the education sector. Right. Uh, being uh, the VC, uh, he's produced teachers, mm -hmm. he's also produced student, good student that we, uh, we, we currently have. Mm -hmm. I, I really believe that uh, be because I was w once a student, uh, a student at the university, right. and, and so I know he's a no-nonsense person. Yeah. And so you also look at uh, the time that uh, Magoa joined NEC mm -hmm. and the transformation that has taken place within that docket mm -hmm. itself to now. That is the surety that moving a slight bit higher position mm -hmm. to be able to cover a broader mandate mm -hmm. uh, more, than the, uh, more than when he was just uh, the chairman for uh, NEC. Mm -hmm. And so I believe uh, Professor would do uh, good in, in that position. All right. Mm -hmm. Just to add on that, you see in the education um, uh, docket, we've mm -hmm. had a lot of cartels, which we even have, you know, uh, until now. Okay. But there's a lot of change that have been made, mm -hmm. and as you can see, even uh, with the books um, tender, <laughs> you know, we always have like these cartels who want to maintain the status quo. Yeah. But I know that, and, and I believe that Professor Magoha is is best placed because then he has done this before, and he will prove himself to the republic. All right, just uh, remaining to with with you, Winnie. Uh, mm -hmm. A few weeks ago, we had the. Uh, the policy that was coming up uh, matters help mm -hmm. and it caused an uproar with many young Kenyans who borrowed help loan and they now can't pay because they do not have jobs. Yeah. The jobs the government have denied us 
if we could put it that way, mm. because we're seeing appointments and positions being given to other people. And I remember a few uh, months ago, the president said, I don't know how true that is. But now, um, how will he handle this help policy that has been, that was like, it has to happen? Uh, I, I do not think we need that health policy right now, the health policy, because you know what? When people go to school, mm -hmm. they go to school because they want to contribute to mm -hmm. building this country. Mm -hmm. You cannot do that if you don't have a job. True. So it's, it's, it's you know, when, when uh, Mina was like saying, um, now people get arrested so right. that they can pay their loans. How do you pay when you can't even buy food for yourself? Right. We have graduates who cannot even afford transport, a hundred bob to come to town. True. The government is not giving them jobs. The same government wants to, you know, mm. arrest, arrest them. You for not paying your for not paying. How do they pay? Do you want our young people to go into robbery? Mm -hmm. The government is not even giving them jobs, you know, True. including the president during his uh, nominative posts. Mm -hmm. Look at the people that the president elects, uh, or I mean nominates to some of these positions. Right. You know, so then it is uh, unfair for you to say that you're educating someone, mm -hmm. giving them some uh, little money to support right. themselves, mm -hmm. and then when they graduate, you ask them for work experience, which they do not even have, right. and then they haven't worked for five years. You want them to pay low, how? Unless you want to say that uh, we are asking our young people and graduates to, to, to get into crime mm -hmm. or to, you know, figure out what next. But, uh, I mean, that shouldn't uh, be proposed right now, and I hope that is not going to work on it. Uh, Eric, what's your opinion on this? Uh, let me just say, I, I, would, I, I would term what you call a policy Mm -hmm. as a roadside declaration mm -hmm. uh, because then uh, seven billion that we are asking young people that are not employed the jobless young people to be able to pay mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. is the only money that we can confidently say as Kenyan that was rightfully invested mm -hmm. uh, money that isn't invested in young people the generation that support in fact, what I call the workforce that supports the Kenyans' growth right. cannot be said that uh, money that is lost. It is not lost. Mm -hmm. You cannot wage war against uh, the generation that support the country. Mm -hmm. This country can only grow with that investment. And so my, my opinion would be uh, the professor to just ignore uh, that, that, uh, that policy or what you term as policy. Because we are not going to uh, get the 70, uh, 7 billion out of nowhere. The government needs to just give young people a job. Mm -hmm. And this country has developed mm -hmm. in terms of technology. If you give Winnie a job today, she requires what we call the, the PIN. Mm -hmm. And once she has a PIN, we know that Winnie is working somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that money can't be deducted. So the government n just needs to be smart. Get them a job, deduct your money, and let them go. All right. That's all. All right. Uh, for a very long time, if there's one thing Kenyan, Kenya is known for is strikes. We have had problems with the TSC and NAT. Now, Winnie, how do you think uh, the CS will now address the problems that have been there between uh, TSC and NAT? You see, the thing is, we have had numerous challenges mm -hmm. between TSC and NAC for a very long time, sure. as you said. Mm -hmm. And I do not think that just uh, coming into uh, education, mm -hmm. Professor Magoha is going to give a one-time solution. It needs all of these stakeholders to come together and say, what would be the best way out? There haven't been strikes because people love to go on the streets. Right. People love their jobs, and they want to continue contributing to building this nation. Mm -hmm. And people want to continue giving their expertise. But if you see that these barriers that hinder you mm -hmm. as, as a, a, a person or a professional in this country, mm -hmm. then it's just right for you to, uh, uh, you know, to demonstrate right. and to demand for these rights uh, that, that you need to have. Right. So I think uh, Professor Magoha, in mm -hmm. my view, is better placed to bring all these people together and listen. Right. And then together they can figure out what way out. Right. Otherwise, we will start having uh, some more, uh, you know, um, strikes and strikes. Everything. And then who who suffers the most is the students, right? right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we want the best for our students, the PM to deduct na kutu arrest in the future <laughs> is to <laughs> be able to stay in school, right, and to perform and to be taught well, mm -hmm. to pass our exams and go to the next level. Right. Otherwise, if that is not happening, that even the people who are teaching, let's say lecturers and, and the teachers, are not in, uh, you know, in, in, in good environment to be able to give these services, right. then I think as a country we'll still continue complaining, mm -hmm. strikes after the other.
All right, Eric, what do you make of this? Can I just, uh, what, I, what, what I think, the, the best question that we need to ask ourselves is what is the reason why the teachers mm -hmm. and uh, the teaching fraternity uh, pick it about? What are, what are some of the questions they're asking? What are some of the demands uh, they lay down when they go out on street? Right. Once, we, once we're in a position to answer such, we'll be able to ask ourselves, does Magoa in a position to be able to address such, uh, such questions or such loopholes within, within the ministry? Right. If he's able to do that, then we can confidently say Magoa will be in a position to do that. But before we are able to even know mm -hmm. and appreciate the reason why the teachers mm -hmm. or even the lecturers mm -hmm. strike, we will always be saying there is a problem between the TAC and the teachers union or the lecturers union right. every time. But we must be able to listen to them. Nobody just go street, especially right. teachers. They are very, very professional. They don't just go st to street because they want to picketing. They, mm. they want to demonstrate. Right. There are issues and there are pertinent issues they want to be addressed. Oh, all right. And just to add on that, you know, Professor, I mean, he's been um, a, a teacher, he's been a lecturer. I think he also understands some of these needs of the of the teachers. Right. So I, I feel like having him there will already has a goodwill. Mm -hmm. You sure. know, it has already set like um an you a platform for them to to believe in him and to really say that this is the right driver for us because he's been there before and he understands and he knows. Mm -hmm. And some of these demands that the teachers have, like um Eric uh, said before, mm -hmm. is that they have certain demands that they have engage the government with before mm -hmm. and the government has promised certain things sure. that have not been done mm -hmm. and so each time when they're having negotiations or discussions like they're starting afresh mm -hmm. but then they're asking what happened to the cba what happened to the agreement to head what happened to the you know right. mous that we signed so i think for me it's for him to be able to carry forward and say where are we like auditing where are we what needs to be done what do we have now what needs you know to be strengthened right and and that way we will get solutions we are running out of time but we have to touch on uh, rashid hsa very lightly mm -hmm. now his um he was uh, his appointment vocational appointment was vacated on friday so uh the document is saying but now uh, do you think his firing was Fair, Eric. Oh, well, <laughs> it depends on where you're standing to say it's fair <laughs> or not. <laughs> uh, but but Many I would say it's just political. <laughs> 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 you see, Kenyans can read anything. Mm -hmm. If you want Kenyans to uh, to tell you, uh, to believe that whatever they are seeing in an ocean is a cloud and not the ocean waters, they will see that. True. And so it depends on what we are reading in in it. But what I would say mm -hmm. is that a chesa his firing was just a <laughs> matter of time right. and just like uh, many of his colleagues mm -hmm. kenyans would want to see more of them fired including mm -hmm. the keter the kunjuris yeah. and the rotich uh, of uh, finance these are people that are we in their docket we have mega corruption right. that has even made kenyans look at corruption no figure today mm -hmm. in kenya scare kenyans Tell them their billions uh, have been looted in a, in a, in a, in a, a dam scandal. They would not even be scared. They've mm -hmm. seen a lot. Mm -hmm. sure. And the president, if Mr. President want to win the war against corruption, he must fire majority of this majority of his uh, cabinet, right. because these are people that are mandated to be able to provide leadership within certain ministries, mm -hmm. and they cannot just say, well, "I didn't know when that happened." I was not part of it. If you're not part of it, tell us who is part of it. All right. And that's all. Mm -hmm. And not just firing is enough. Because if you're fired with 21 billion, Kenyans are suffering. That you just go be home. Up and yes, we, 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 we need to see majority of these people being prosecuted right. to the letter. Okay. And that is the only legacy Uru Kenyatta will leave to Kenyans. All right. There is no legacy. We, Kenyans have seen roads. Thika Road was here before Uru. And so we have seen road, we have seen all this, what we call the SGR, even though they are not helping as such. But what, right. the gov what Kenyans want to see today right. is the corruption being right. fought to the latter. All right, Winnie, your recommendation, uh, one thing you'd, you, you want to see in these ministries, that serious thing you hoping for, that serious thing you are you're expecting as we wind up your recommendation? Accountability. Right. We want the cabinet secretaries to be accountable because right. it's your docket. There is no way 
a shilling can get lost without you knowing. Right. And so it is just right that as Kenyans, we have employed you mm -hmm. and we want you to be answerable to us because at the end of the day, we, the people of Kenya, right. are the highest office in this land. True. So there is no way money can just get lost like it's, you know, sweets on the streets. Mm -hmm. And you say we've had seven billion got, got lost last time and now we have 21 billion and now we have another. For how long are you going to sing these billions that are getting lost? We need those monies so that we can stop chasing the graduates of this country. We need those monies. Mm -hmm. We need the president to act. And corruption is not just being fought uh, on media and, and giving very uh, stern positions. Yeah. But we want to see real action. Let's get these people in court, prosecuted, and money returned to the public coffers. Uh, all right. Uh, Eric, 30 <coughs> seconds, your final recommendations. Uh, well, I would want to watch Kenyans. The war against corruption and the disease that is ailing this Kenya mm -hmm. cannot just be fought by president. Kenyan must get dissatisfied. Kenyan must get angry. Mm -hmm. Kenyan must condemn corruption with the strongest term possible. Mm -hmm. We've seen we do not need to have Raila Odinga leading demonstration to condemn corruption. We do not need Haden Duale speak on TV, speaking on TV to condemn corruption. We just need to have Kenyan getting angry and saying enough is enough. True. And that is the only way we are going to help this country. All the right. country is bleeding and that is the only solution. All right. Many thanks, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for coming and sharing uh, your sentiments and uh, your views, how you feel about this reshuffle. They have been my guest, Winnie Obure, governance activist, and Eric a war a governance uh, expert my name is Dereva hillary many thanks for keeping us company coming up next is why mashariki with dj tsk and ken really be, be sure to stay tuned i'll see you on friday have a good night hey